everybody, I am Chef Maya and I'm the founder of the Black Brew Culinary Collective and I'm so happy to be here today as a part of the Creole Tomato Festival. Um, I will be making for you guys today a Creole Tomato Hot Pot which incorporates a lot of the Creole and Cajun flavors here from Louisiana with some Asian flavors which I really love. All right, so I'm just going to be chopping up these collard greens into a chiffonade. That's a French culinary technique where you roll up the leaves and you cut them into little ribbons. And I'm gonna throw these directly into my pan that's already hot with some hot oil. Here, that sizzle, that's nice. Add a little salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of Korean chili pepper to that. While that's cooking, I am going to start cutting up my sweet potato, local by the way. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be uniform. Just nice little segments here. I have these beautiful spring onions from a local farm. I'm gonna get rid of the top. You don't wanna use that. A little bitter. And I'm just gonna cut these guys in half. I'm gonna get rid of this grass on the bottom. I'm cutting those in half so I can get a nice little sear like right on the bottom of those. I just wanna wilt these collard greens, not too much gonna get hot broth poured on top of them so you don't have to worry about them being tough and they're cut small enough that they won't be very fibrous. For the tomatoes I'm gonna cut this tomato into eighths. Just get some nice wedges there. Cut those over there with my onions. So now that I have everything cut that I need to cut, I'm gonna get these collard greens into this bowl. So this is gonna be a base for the hot pot, so we just wanna put these right into the center and to the bottom. Like so, I'm gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna keep my pan hot because I'm gonna sear these other ingredients that I've cut for this bowl. Add a little more oil. And I'm gonna go right into this pan with my tomatoes. And my onions. And just a little oil on top and a little salt and pepper because you can never have too much seasoning. So while these are searing, I am going to get my dumplings ready to go. I have got my dumpling wrappers here. Keep them wrapped up in a towel so that they don't dry out while you're working with them. I've got my raw hot sausage that'll be going into the dumplings. I'm just gonna set this here and get this ready. And you always wanna have a little bowl of water when you make your dumplings. Give these guys a little flip. These are actually ready to go into the bowl. I think the fun thing about making a hot pot is it's like kind of creating your own little artist palette. And you arrange your things on the bowl just the way you like them, nice and cute. My onions and tomatoes and collard greens sliding all over the bowl because they don't want to stay where I want them to. And that's perfectly fine too. 
Now I'm going to throw these crawfish in here. And a little bit of sweet potato. And some mustard greens. Micro mustard greens because they cook a lot faster. Turn this fire down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna get ready to roll some dumplings. So dumplings, I think it's the most fun part of all of this. Um, I do a lot of classes where I teach my students how to do like the traditional gyoza wrapper dumplings. And so it's actually pretty easy once you get into it. So you have your water, you have your filling, and you have your dumpling wrappers. I always go into the middle just in case like the ones on the outside have gotten a little dry or crusty because if they're dry, they will not stay together. You want to make sure you only have one. They stick a little bit. If you make them too thick, they won't cook properly. I like to make my dumplings directly in my hand. So you just set them in the center of your hand. You make sure you have a little spot for you to put your filling. You take your filling, you set it right there in the middle. And then you take the water and you paint a half moon, fold it over, and you seal it, just like so. You wanna make sure that it's sealed all the way down to where the filling is, as tight as possible, because you don't want them to explode. You take another layer of water, right around the outside edge, and then we do our crimp. I like to do one edge, then the other edge, and then two more. Cute little dumpling, yeah? So I'm gonna do a couple of these. You wanna make sure you don't put too much filling. If you put too much filling, it won't seal properly, and again, they will explode, and nobody wants an exploding dumpling. So after you've done them for a while, you can go a little bit faster. I'm gonna steam them quickly, and then we're gonna put the soup together. Sometimes I put the water first, it's okay. And here we have the last one for these bowls. And if you notice, each one is just a little bit different. That adds a little bit of character. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water into this before I set the dumplings in. Those are ready to steam. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to this just so they don't stick, which is very important because when your dumplings stick to your basket, it sucks, they fall apart. It's no good. I'm gonna take a clean towel and rub this oil onto here. Kind of like you would do for a cast iron skillet. I'm gonna take my six little beautiful dumplings and I'm gonna put them right into the steamer basket. Make sure they're not touching each other or anything like that because they'll stick together if they are. Arrange those in there. Put this top on, let them steam. That usually takes about five minutes. While those are steaming, I'm gonna put the rest of my ingredients into this bowl. I'm gonna put my crawfish, my mustard greens, and my sweet potatoes. Into the bowl, just arranged nicely. And they are just gonna be there to be a vessel for this wonderful broth that I've made. All right, so our dumplings have steamed for about five minutes and that is a good time for them. The best way to know when your dumplings are ready is that your filling is going to be tough and resistant, not like soft as the sausage was when you put it into the the steamer in the first place. So I'm gonna turn this guy off. 
I'm gonna take these dumplings and I'm gonna put them directly into this bowl. I think I'll put them right on top. I think this is the fun part, just assembling everything into the bowl to get it ready for the broth. <clears throat> I think I'll make this one prettier though. Here you go. Let's have everything in there assembled and ready for the broth. So I wanna talk about this broth just briefly. This broth is juiced Creole tomatoes cooked down with collard greens and smoked turkey and then drained. So it's got the flavor reminiscent of pot liquor with tomatoes. And that's exactly what I'm looking for to bring this fusion together. And I'm just gonna Pour this broth right over the top of that. Isn't that gorgeous? It is gorgeous. You want it right over the top of your ingredients in that bowl. Just ready to go. And then we can garnish it with a little bit of these micro mustard greens. And I think I'll put a couple of slices of Creole tomato on top just to put it all together. Thin slices. How pretty is that? That Creole Tomato Hot Pot. Thanks for joining me guys here for the Creole Tomato Festival. It's been a blast preparing this Creole Tomato Hot Pot for you. You can check me out on Instagram at Black Brew Culinary Collective. And you can check out my website, blackbrewcollective.com. Thanks for tuning in.